What up design champions? Welcome to episode six of Design Time. Let's get started. Our medium for today will be a brochure. Oh, nice. And we will be making a brochure for a company that sells air from another part of the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of cool. Let's come up with a name. Geo Air. Better air from far away. Far away. Air away. Far away air. Air from there. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Let's call it Air from there. That's a good name. Pop, pop. If I want the book right, I'll sketch out what it looks like. Each page and layout be great. I say now a box for a picture, a line for some type. Find the right mixture of width versus height. An element here, an element square. Where it might appear is right over there. Don't get complicated, there ain't that much about it. Try to get it straightened with bleed room around it. When it goes to print, it's gotta be clear. Don't wanna reprint, cause that just ain't fair. Oh my gosh, it never is. I've finished sketching out a layout for four pages of the brochure, and I've come up with an idea where the left side of the brochure will have images of a cityscape or factories causing pollution or maybe some rubble in a city and then the right side will have images of nature, a lake, forest, somewhere that would make you think oh this is where I am now or I can get my air from there and hopefully that will be a little bit persuasive. One tip when creating something that's going to have a lot of type is to don't choose a lot of different typefaces, just choose maybe two fonts. It will create cohesion, it will promote readability, everything will be golden McHolden. I got a bunch of free stock photos which are apparently completely free, royalty free, everything free, so I hope I can use these and not get in trouble. I'm pretty sure I won't. Let's get started trying to make this thing. Okay, go. Here I am doing what I like to call a type discovery. Basically I'm going through Adobe's type kit to find fonts that I think will work for this project. Normally I use sans serif fonts because I like kind of a modern look, but for this one I wanted to go a little bit classic so I was delving into the world of serif fonts. And once I found some good ones of those, I got a pretty baller image for the cover of this whole shebang. And then I had some difficulties placing the four words on the front. Sometimes you need a little, ooh, a little what? I think it's kind of hard to place uh, fewer words, especially when you want to make them big. Okay, so I jumped ahead quite a bit here. I think this is on the um, fourth, no, third page. And I'm just editing the images in Photoshop to make them look a little bit downtrodden, you know, so that compared to the page on the right, it looks like a place that you would not want to breathe the air from. <laughs> Uh, here's some rubble or maybe trash. I think it's rubble. I'm just putting these together and then I, throughout this project, I found some facts about air pollution. So I copy and pasted those into, um, into the brief to try to make the argument just a little bit more solid with some real facts, some real facts here. And then I had four pages, it was on to the final page, and for this I just made a really, really quick logo, something to put on this bottle that was supposedly air from a much better place with much higher air quality. I was just adjusting this in Photoshop until I get it right, and then I brought it back into Illustrator. Which leads me to the question, why uh, do I use Illustrator instead of InDesign? Um, probably just because I've used InDesign before, but I don't feel very comfortable with it. Um, yeah, maybe in the future I'll use it a lot more. We'll see. Okay guys, sugar and fries. I just got the printout of the brochure. It's actually kind of like a booklet. I don't know if it can necessarily qualify as a brochure, maybe more of a booklet. Anyways, here it is. Ba -ba -da -ba. Oh no, that's upside down. Here it is. Sometimes you need a little, a little what? Oh my gosh, my interest has peaked so much. Sometimes, Okay, on the left we have slightly discolored images of 
pollution. And then on the right, hopefully we have a little bit more vibrancy, just a little bit of a nice nature area in the black versus the white. It's kind of interesting. Um, one critique I think might be that these, the text is like too much off. It's almost like half off, which makes it maybe kind of hard to read, but I don't know. It's not so important anyways. Um, this right here was a big problem for me. There's text here and I don't think it looks good. Um, the kind of dark on this, on this bridge here. I don't know what I could have done to maybe make it better. I wanted to put it there but I guess I didn't have to, so that's okay. And then next page, so something, no, sometimes you need what? I need what? Well, I'm gonna flip to the next one. A little, and then this on these pages, I break the schematic that we had on these two a little, and then I have the same kind of discolored, um, hopefully scary looking with a little bit of text here. And this is the first time I put type not on a picture, which broke it up a little bit. Um, and then, bam, final image. It's, it's kind of like a beer commercial. I've seen a lot of beer commercials where they're like on a beach in front of an ocean. This is a lake and a little bit colder, but still kind of the same thing with the bottle sitting on the water. The world's finest air brought to you in a nice little bottle. <laughs> Let's get it, buddy. So this was our little brochure for a company that bottles air from another part of the world and lets you suck it up wherever you are. <laughs> okay, I hope you enjoyed the project. Thanks so much for watching this episode. You are a complete boss. And hopefully this week I'll come out with maybe a different video or another tutorial. And as always, stay awesome, possum. And I'll catch you later, alligator. Next Tuesday. Bye. Incorporated. Immediately what I'm envisioning is a mobile app that helps, that allows you to customize